Okay, so I've got the engine all broken down, and uh, this engine's garbage, but the power head is good. So I want to get this off if I can, so I can put it on a new engine. So the first step was removing these long bolts that go on the side here. Like that. So there are four of those, two on the top, two on the bottom. And then there are also four shorter bolts, which went through this housing as well. So once those are out, um, theoretically the stator is free to pull off. Um, the one catch is uh, this bearing in the housing here is tough to get out. If you're lucky, you can pull this housing out by hand, but usually that's not the case. Um, so I have a puller set up. I'm going to apply some pressure. You have to be careful not to apply too much because you will break uh, this end housing. It's just a thin aluminum and it can't take too much pressure. Um, also, I unbolted that housing from this frame rail. Um, so it is completely disconnected and should, well, allow it to come off. So I did try this the other night and I, I was not getting very far and I was afraid I was gonna, you know, push this too hard. So I did put a little lubricant over by the, the bearing where it meets the housing and I'm gonna try it again and see if it will come out this time. Okay, good. Now this stator should slide right out. And it's heavy, so make sure you hold it well. And that's it. So this is the easy one. Okay, so that came off pretty easy actually, um, as it should. Fun part will be getting this off. They almost never come off easily, so I will uh, do some prep and turn you back on for this. All right, so today I'm gonna be taking this rotor off this tapered shaft. Um, you know, to do this, you have to obviously remove the stator first, which exposes the rotor. And going down the center of the rotor is this bolt, and it's threaded at the end, and that threads into the tapered shaft. Um, so once that bolt is removed, you need to inspect right at the collar here and see if you have threads. Um, sometimes you get lucky and there's threads there. In my case, there were no threads, uh, so I had to tap it and I was able to th get it about three quarters of an inch down so I, I bought the appropriate size bolt that matches these threads now and I marked how far this bolt goes in so it's about three quarters of an inch um, and then the next thing to do is to get a rod and stick it down the shaft all the way until it hits the tapered shaft and then mark where the rod is coming out so the rod's all the way in, just going to mark it, 
And the idea behind this is you want to cut the rod a little bit short. So it actually, when you put the cut piece in, it should go past the end here and go in at least a quarter of an inch, probably more. You want to have enough threads so that when this bolt starts pushing, there's enough threads that it's not going to tear out. And you want to have at least a quarter inch of threads left to push that rod into the tapered shaft, popping this off. So I'm going to cut this rod to size and then um, crank down on this and see if we can't get this off. All right, so the rod's been cut down to size. So it just goes in like that. Okay, and for this, I put a moving blanket under here. These things do tend to launch off, so I'm gonna to try to give it something soft to land on. And to loosen it, I'm gonna use a breaker bar. It's not a huge one, but it is probably about a two foot bar. So that'll help give me some leverage. Um, this engine, as you can probably see by the hole, um, is no good. Uh, otherwise, I would have stuffed rope down the cylinder to keep it still. Um, for now, I have it kind of jerry-rigged with something kind of holding the flywheel. I'm not sure how well that's going to hold, but uh, I guess I'll give it a shot. it is. So that is how you remove a rotor. Um, this method I've had the best luck with. You, know, you do have to have some patience to tap this out properly and make sure you get a proper size rod. Um, I've done this before with a, a threaded rod. And that actually went into the thread a little bit here, and it kind of messed the thread up uh, just a little bit. Uh, so when you get a rod, you do want to try to get one that's not threaded and one that'll sit, you know, outside so it doesn't go in that thread hole. So I hope this helps someone, and uh, thanks for watching.